Uh, we actually have Tim Ord on the line. Tim, are you there? I am. How Thanks are you for doing? Me on. Doing all right. Oh, hello. Yep. Tim, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, I can hear you. Perfect. Very good. Good. Good deal. So, well, what are we looking at today, Tim? All right. Uh, I got. I sent you over some charts. Yes. Uh, I hope you got them. We have them up right now. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Chart one. Yeah, the put call ratio we have for chart one. Yeah. It, it's just, uh, anyhow, this chart is the equity put call ratio reading, which is the middle window, and it goes back to two thousand four or something or five, whatever. And I want to point out that when that ratio uh, on January tenth, uh, two thousand twenty-four, which is what a week ago, thereabouts, well, it closed at one point five five. And I marked the other times, kind of with blue dotted lines, when that happened. And every time it did happen, it came at a low, and that gets you in the vicinity of low. It doesn't exactly pinpoint the exact low, but it does say you're going into an intermediate term low because that's the ratio of that high on a one day basis is pretty well. It's extremely rare. It happened five times over the last 20 years. But every time it does happen, uh, it was an important intermediate term low. And the bottom window um, is the um, five day average of the equity put call ratio readings. Anything above uh, 0.8 is bullish for 0.94. And the next uh, second window up from the bottom is a, the 10 day average. Anything above uh, 0.8 is bullish, and we're at 0.8. So, sentiment wise, we're looking at an important low forming in this vicinity. So so you look at the bigger picture, you want basically everybody to be on the other side of the fence, which basically, according to put call ratio readings, are on the bearish side. So they're kind of leaning on the put side right now. So let's, let's flip to chart two. Yep. So we're kind of kind of working from the long term back down to the short term. So the, the sentiment is uh, the public is bearish, which is, in, is bullish. You need uh, so the bigger picture on sentiment is bullish because everybody's bearish here. Right. And this this chart is um, yeah, it's a weekly SPX VIX ratio, which is second window up from the bottom. And one thing I want to point out on this is when the S and P's are making higher highs, and the SPX VIX ratio is making lower highs, that's a bearish uh, uh, setup. And a lot of times, since it's on the weekly time frame. It projects an, uh, an intermediate term bearish signal. And the last time we got a signal bearishly was basically back at the uh, 2022 high. The SPs were making higher highs. This ratio was making lower highs. And that predicted a pullback in 2022. In 2023, uh, the market was kind of going sideways into the April May period. And this ratio is making higher highs. That was a bullish uh, configuration. Suggests the market is going to break higher, and it did. And currently, uh, the S and P's uh, did break above the previous high of uh, this was at probably November or something. Uh, no, it wasn't November. It looks like about September. Uh, anyway, it broke above the September high. The ratio. As the market uh, went up and made higher highs, this ratio made also higher highs. So intermediate term, that was bullish, kind of saying that as far as the uh, VIX is concerned, the market in general should make higher highs going forward. So anyhow, that's a bullish intermediate term sign. Right. Um, so, yeah, we're kind of going fast here, but we're, we're, well, we're you know, we can, back we can down talk to about the shorter it. term. But we have to look at the bigger time frame to actually see where we are. Are we in a bullish configuration as far as sentiment, as far as uh, right. uh, bands decline and all this other stuff? You have to look at the bigger picture. Well, I keep showing this chart, and this chart top window is the uh, NYSE summation index, and the chart goes back to 2007. And I want to point out here, going into uh, the, I guess it was September low, uh, this, or actually, the October low, uh, you need a selling climax in a summation index uh, for actually a bullish picture to develop. You need a selling climax 
then within two months, you need a buying climax. And that predicts, and you may term bullish signs. So for over the next, most likely a year, maybe even longer, uh, the market's set up for a bullish situation. Well, October right. 20. 7th, 2023, we hit minus 813, so that's the selling climax, a reading below 700. Then within two months, you need a rally above 1,000, which is December 27th, and on December 27th, we did close above 1,000. So even though there can be short-term um, pullbacks, intermediate term is bullish. Still on the uh, so, right, right. So, so anyhow, the, the sim is bullish, uh, Everything I'm looking at is bullish for 2024. Not saying every day is going to be an update, but let's, let's, let's look at what the short-term uh, picture says here. This um, is on chart four so, here? Yeah, it'd be chart four. Probably going kind of fast. I'm hoping not losing everybody. But uh, I do a lot with, with panic. Panic only forms at bottoms. And the more panic you have, the more uh, stronger that next rally will be. So, and I define panic as a trend close above 1.2. And so, the longer it stays above 1.2 duration and time, the stronger that next rally is coming. So, on, on this chart, I, I got uh, the two day average, which is on the bottom window. The middle window is a 21 day average. So, that's the kind of a intermediate term uh, signal. And the top window, is the uh, uh, 10-day average. Right. And so what you like to see, preferably, you know, I had another five-day in here, but I didn't put it on this chart. But all these, the the, the two-day, the 10-day, and the 21-day average of the trend all reach bullish levels. In other words, so there was a lot of massive selling on the, on the pullback. I hear the I hear the music. Yeah, so Tim, I, I can hold. Yeah, Tim, stay with us. Uh, I want to hear some more of your thoughts on the market as well as we're you know kind of seeing this sideways shuffle pattern currently. Um, I, I like hearing this kind of bullish sentiment. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Orr. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined currently with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, you were just talking about a lot of bullish signs for the market as a whole. Right, uh, it, I am. And, and so on chart four, going back to that, the trend is advancing issues. The definition of the trend is advancing issues over declining issues and divide that by advancing volume over declining volume. So if you do all the numbers, it shows when the, the volume's hitting the down stocks, the trend goes up. So <clears throat> and you think that would be bearish, but it's actually bullish. So the more, uh, the more uh, volume is on to the down stocks, the higher that trend goes, and actually the more bullish it becomes. So if you get a lot of days of that, you show kind of a sold out market. Right. So, right. Um, so anyhow, all the time frames are, are bullish here, and they're, they're, uh, you can have some. This is not uh, an indicator that picks the exact day of the, of the low, but it gets you definitely in the vicinity of the low. So uh, this turned actually bullish a couple of days. I mean, all three of them, all three time frames turned bullish over the last couple of days, but really turned bullish yesterday. And probably yesterday, I think, is probably a, a bottom of, of some sort. And the reason why, we can go to chart five. Okay, let's take a look. Awesome, we have chart so, five up. Okay, the bottom window is the... Uh, 10-day trend and closed at 1.35. Anything above 1.2 is bullish. And I, I pointed out in my market letter that probably last Thursday's low was going to be tested. And it was tested on lighter volume and closes above the previous low. It's a, it's a bullish sign. And exactly that's exactly what happened yesterday. And I always like to have at least two, if not three or four things turn bullish uh, with me. I just don't take one indicator. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink here. My my throat's getting oh, absolutely. parts. Absolutely. So but anyhow, yesterday we tested last Thursday's low on ten percent lighter volume and actually closed above the previous low by two cents. You know, but still above the previous low. So that was bullish. And we also had a two day trend yesterday of uh um, three point five two. And normally that's right on the outskirts of some work, some don't type indicators 
anything around four <clears throat> and preferably higher is a slam dunk. You buy it on the close. 3.52 is just basically on the margin. And I looked at that and I'm thinking, God, that's really close. And uh, right. the volume studies were bullish. And I think, well, I'll just wait one more day, see what happens. Well, it turns out that yesterday's was probably an important low. To really confirm that the low was yesterday is for today's volume to be higher than yesterday's volume. Now, today's not over yet, but we're almost matching yesterday's volume. So we got, you know, about a half hour to go here. Mm-hmm. So most likely, well, there's, there's probably a 99% chance today's volume will be higher than yesterday's volume. And that's what you want to see, a, a little bump in energy to the upside compared to the previous day. Right. So most likely, there was a low yesterday, and I sent out uh, actually a, oh, an email to my clients here about 15, 20 minutes ago. I don't remember how long we go, but and then, uh, I'm buying on the close today because uh, the bottom was probably yesterday. How long the rally will last is hard to say, but this market's gone sideways since basically uh, mid-December. Right. And so that's about two, or well, as, 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 so the sideways consolidation lasts about a month. So at a minimum, if the sideways consolidation is a month, the rally should last around a month. If the consolidation was two months, then the rally should, in general, last two months. So we probably at least rally into sometime in you know February, maybe uh, maybe longer. I don't know, but in general, this year is going to be up. So how high is high? I think it's going to be at least a double digit year. That's ten percent. You know, it could be another twenty percent like we had last year. We right. actually had twenty three percent last year. Um, you know, it could approach that. So this year, probably a pretty good year. And also, this is pre-election year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're not going to see a bear market not for election year. Right. You know, course. especially, uh, you know, the incumbents wants to keep the market looking bullish. So um, definitely. And I think a lot of the like the things that could be like a bearish factor for the market are more relatively short term. You know, I mean, I, you know, I bring up a lot. Even when I fill in, you know, issues obviously we have with some world trade, right? Issues with the Panama Canal, the Red Sea, um, kind of those things. But I, I do genuinely think those are kind of more short term, any kind of depressor on the market. And I, I like this idea of a, a bearish, or excuse me, a bullish one going ahead here. So, yeah. Well, the market, you know, a lot of people look at the fundamentals and they interpret the fundamentals. The right. individual does, the individual investor does. Well, the market inter- inter- does that interpretation for you. I mean, it gives you the signals what that means if it's bearish or bullish. So whatever's going on in the world right now, you can look at all the negatives and and all the you know the sure. inflation, the the wars, and whatever. And the market has a, uh, uh, uses it. Uh, yeah, you know, this year the market is interpreting that at least over the next uh, what you know twelve months or, or mm-hmm. so is is going to be a bullish outcome. So right, I, I right, have, exactly. Uh, the best interpretation is is for the market to tell you what it's, it's going to do, and there are certain signs to look for in the market. And I think uh, those signs I, I've displayed on this, you know, short very podcast valid point. we had here. Yeah, very so, valid point. So, all um, right. Well, then we have. I think now we have chart six. We have about. We still have some time. We have chart okay. six up on the screen right now. All right, chart six. This is a. Um, the middle window is the um, discount premium for the Sprout Gold Trust. So that uh, middle window with the the red line in there is when that um, is minus uh, the discount or premium is below minus two percent. And what and drew drew lines uh, blue lines all across when that uh, discount hit below minus two percent. Matter of fact, I showed this on Tuesday also. Even though the market has backed off some, the two two percent discount or minus two percent discount and greater is still um, prevalent here. So it can right. go down a little bit, uh, but in general, you're still looking at some sort of a low in this vicinity. When you get above two percent and the market starts going down, that's when the market actually can go quite a ways. But it can be off a week or so, but long as that two percent is still 
relevant. In other words, if the market was going down and the and the discount wasn't going below two percent, would be a bearish sign. I see. But since it has gone down to two percent and actually has stayed below two uh, minus two percent, this uh, January fifth, I think, is the first time it got below there. You're looking at a bobbing process. You had a little minor rally and it came back down, and then yesterday's close came in at two point two six. So what's that mean for for uh, GDX? Well, we make a quick note here. There's a gap on, uh, this is chart number seven. There's a gap on November 14th of last year at 27.23. And for some reason, GDX likes to go to gaps. And we're, so we're just a whisker away from testing that gap. Hey, In Tim, my opinion, uh, we're probably going to touch that gap. Can you stay with us into the next uh, segment? Go over GDX yep, sure a little can. bit more? Awesome. Fantastic. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, before we went to break, Tim, we're looking at the GDX, uh, your chart you had. The GDX currently trade about 27.55 and uh, has kind of been moving downwards right. over the past month. What are yeah, we looking at with it? Got, yeah, it has moved downward. Like I said, January 5th, uh, the discount, a uh, premium discount for the Sprout Gold Trust has mm -hmm. been below minus two, and that's usually in the bottom area. That gap on uh, I got a note there at on the charts is twenty seven twenty three. Yeah, that's where that gap starts, and that's probably where we're going to head. There's another gap right above it. It's kind of a, a place gap there, sideways market. That was on uh, November twenty first. We hit that gap and rocked it up. And we we'll come back down, but really, this market hasn't done anything uh, mm -hmm. since August of, of uh, last year. It's gone up, it's gone down. It looked like a head and shoulders bottom formed, which it probably did. It had projection up around uh, thirty-two, thirty-three. And it got basically to the minimum. Now we we'll come back down again, but now you got the the discount minus two again. So you're still looking at some short short term low. Could this sideways pattern go on for another six months? Yeah, it could. But at some point, you're going to hit an impulse wave. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And an impulse wave is where the market pretty much trades one direction instead of this chop back and forth. So don't know when that's going to happen. But uh, internals look okay. They're not you know, extremely bullish or bearish. Right. Uh, you had the bullish percent index. I think high has got which is up around 53%. In other words, 53% of the stocks on GDX were on point-figure buy signals. That's still around 50, so that's not bearish, but it's not really bullish either. So it's kind of a nothing market right now. So I, I don't think we're really breaking down here, but we're not breaking up either. But right. uh, I think we're probably going to test that gap and bounce off that gap and how the next rally performs will tell a lot. Uh, but momentum studies are just kind of neutral. They're just not showing a lot here. But uh, and, and it would be nice to see something in the market. That's usually when it happens, though. It definitely, and, and it would be nice to see some actual movement in gold as well. Uh, any of the, you know, substantial moves now. Of course, there are some decent equities have done well over the past few months. You know, even talking like the August time frame. Um, but seeing like the whole sector really take off would I think would be super nice. Can you explain a little bit um, the the up down volume here at the bottom chart? Oh uh, right, okay the. The, uh, it's an 18-day average. Okay. Uh, the bottom window is a GDX up-down volume percent, and it's an 18-day average. And over time, basically when that indicator is above minus 10, the market is in an uptrend, which is all the blue area. I see. When it's below minus 10, which we are right now, it's in a downtrend. And the next window up is an advanced decline. Or, yeah, it's up-down volume bottom window and the yes, next one up yep. is advanced decline with an 18-day average. And that's also below minus 10. But, you know, in a downtrend, you know, they're below minus 10, but once you start getting above minus 10 is when another uptrend starts. And, and right now, I guess you say you're, we're in an uptrend, but you got to remember that the minus 2% discount always comes near lows. So, you know, you're not going to keep going down with the minus right. 2 on the... Uh, uh, so most likely you'll probably hit that gap, probably found support, and how the next ride will perform. I'll kind of tell how the story will be. Maybe we we go up for a while and uh, turn back down. It's, it's, it's just kind of a mush market. It's just yes. Uh, really, you can't say 
you know, I'd like to see a blowout. But I think the big blowout on gold did come in August of 2022. I'm thinking that was a major low back, a, a, a multi-year low back in 2022. And the market has worked a little bit higher. I don't think we have the strength or the weakness, I guess you might say, to get back down to the August 2022 low. So we're in a some sort of a, a, a consolidation phase that's going to that's building cause for the next rally. Uh, but that rally may not start until later this year. I don't know. Right, that's right. And I thought we were starting here with the head and shoulders bottom pattern that worked out pretty well, but didn't follow through. Yeah. And really, the question is, you know, what is, what is that major catalyst, and, and how are people viewing it on a on a larger scale? Well, Tim, thank you, thank yeah. you so much for coming on. That was fantastic as always, and I really always learn so much when you come on. So I really appreciate it. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be on. So uh, I guess we'll talk next Tuesday again. So next Tuesday, we'll I think Tom then. should be back as well. So that'll be uh, fantastic to have you guys back on again. And everyone, this is uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord hyphen Oracle dot com. Go visit his website, check it out. Um, as you heard him mention earlier, you know he releases updates to all of his clients, and uh, it's just more of this really good stuff, really get into the nitty-gritty of all of it, which uh, I think we can all appreciate. Tim, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you later. Absolutely.